So I'd like to introduce Dr. Jennifer Ayton, if I pronounced your name correctly. Yep. Um, uh, she's a researcher, lecturer in public health at the School of Medicine, the Uni of Tasmania, and her title of her presentation is Sharing Knowledge Using Art to Translate and Disseminate Research Findings to Communities. Thank you. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, it's hard. You're a hard act to follow. It's really <laughs> difficult. Um, firstly, I'd like to pay my respects to the traditional owners of the land and the elders past and present and acknowledge that Tasmanian Aboriginal people are the traditional and original custodians of the skies, water, land of Tasmania and the country which their mothers and, grand and grandmothers have given birth. That's uh, quite poignant for this particular um, presentation, I think. Um, and secondly, uh, I've just noticed that my collaborators aren't on the initial slide and um, that's a Dr uh, Eliza Burke who is our curator for this, um, Lee Tesh, Eva Nilsson which is one of the artists, Alyssa Wilson, Janine Miller and Nat Grant and many others that you'll see at the end. So essentially this, um, and please keep me to time because I could potentially go over. Um, essentially this was, this is a story about women's experiences um, and the artwork that's been generated came from women's uh, stories, Tasmanian women's stories from rural remote as well as urban and it's about giving voice to the women's experiences and because what we're facing at the moment is a, a, an issue that women um, although they want to breastfeed and they're starting to breastfeed, by the first two months, 50% of those that are, st are starting, and that's 90% of Australian women, have actually stopped. And so we were interested in what is actually going on underneath that data, and so we talked to women around Tasmania. And so the stories are incredibly complex. I won't go into the, how the study, the initial study was um, conducted, but it was a qualitative study that means we went and talked to everyone, we interviewed and focus grouped throughout Tasmania for 12 months. And then through using those stories, we engaged six creative artists to then interpret that work in any way that they chose to. Uh, and each artist was for, uh, the artists were from the uh, College of Creative Arts and Media and Nat Grant was a percussionist and musician from Melbourne. And each added their own take, um, but were truly embodied and gave voice to these women's stories. So as you can see, that um, we've incorporated women's, um, some of their, how they felt and their direct quotes in here. And that there was a huge variation in what women experienced. That these stories are really difficult to listen to, that they're not, uh, what we imagine breastfeeding to be like. And so these women felt that they couldn't actually talk about these subjects. They couldn't talk about the enormous grief that they felt when they couldn't breastfeed or when it didn't go according to plan or didn't go according to what the, um, the public health messages were, were sending. And so we end up with this Madonna um, phenomenon where women are expecting it to be something and in reality it's something different. And by not giving voice to that, we're actually denying the women the reality that they then can choose to do something with. And so you can see these women, they were quite vocal in how they talked about their bodies and their breasts. We had a major exhibition at Flimsu Gallery. We partnered with the Institute of Social Change. We partnered with, um, of course, part of UTES. Um, the, art, uh, the artists and the, creative, the School of Creative Arts. It was funded by a small, tiny grant, so it also demonstrates what you can do with a tiny little sniff of money. We pulled together this exhibition and the artists generated the work within six, uh, not even six months, within four months. And so now I'm just going to go through what each of these um, pieces of work represent. So there was 127 women's stories. There were 22 focus groups and there were um, 
19 one-to-one -one interviews. So each one of these represent either one story or a collective story. This is actually some of my work. So I became not only the researcher, but the artist. And for me, that was a way of dealing with the stories that live in my head, that uh, every single uh, one of these uh, forms, I can remember distinctly where it came from. I know the voice and I know the context. And knowing the data is so important. So each woman experienced something very differently. So these are Raku fired ceramics. So they were taken from a, uh, a plaster cast of a very willing volunteer. And that was then molded and shaped into um, a breast um, and then fired in the earth. And that speaks very um, accurately of what the experience of breastfeeding was for many of these women. And we've got a small micro version of this um, here, so you can come and have a look at some of those. So they were in almost like a rhythmical um, session along the wall. We had babies and young children at the exhibition would come up and say, mine. <laughs> And so Janine Miller was one of the um, beautiful artists who also created work. And you can see that her work, each artist read the transcripts, they were all de-identified, so they could, we couldn't identify anyone, and then they interpreted, uh, they generated their art from that. This hung within the gallery, and children and people came up to that as well and, and spun around it. It moved to a soundtrack as well, that we had overlaying of um, the stories that were reinterpreted by the artist. You can see Eva's in our micro little exhibition here. Eva's work is quite arresting. It's about the endurance that women felt. So that was one of the key themes that came through, that women felt an enormous sense of endurance. They really did want to do this and they persevered through numerous experiences, but they kept going and this is really speaks to what it's women felt like when they were going through that process. And importantly, it over, it, uh, she, she talks about and refers to the, uh, what's overlooked in breastfeeding. And then if we're going to make a difference in a public health perspective, then we actually have to acknowledge that this is what it's like for women. It's not saying that breastfeeding's bad or good. We know the benefits. It's not about that. It's actually about just talking and having a conversation in the community. Alyssa Nielsen, uh, Nielsen's, uh, Wilson's work, really, she had a, a, a lump of clay that she worked with for almost four months and moulded and changed and danced with and worked with it to really understand what it was like to have that experience as she was reading the transcripts. She talks about the lack, it talks about the lack of control that women sometimes felt and that they knew that they were struggling, but they couldn't talk about it. This is some of my work again. And so when one of the, another key finding that came from the data was that women dissected their breasts off. So in order to deal with the realities of breastfeeding, they use their milk separately, they use their nipples separately, they dissect their bodies into pieces that, the, that they perceive is going to help them. And in some cases it does help them, but it ends up being this uh, way of working with their body that they cannot understand. The small round pieces in the background, you can see, they really represent that loss of loneliness and isolation and sometimes emptiness, when, what women described when they stopped breastfeeding. So essentially we have women who felt disconnect from their bodies. And for the, that's an issue. And through, I think Kelly, you've just elicited the connection that we need to make with our bodies. And somehow if we bring other forms, uh, either art or something else in, that we can actually help people connect with their bodies through trauma, through uh, this essentially women's grief, then perhaps we can actually create um, a connect, uh, we can help them reconnect with what's actually going on and make sense of their realities. So this is really is the, the essence 
that everyone's telling women that this is the best thing that they can do and they know that they need this. They understand this and they want to do it. But they do have that sense of endurance and pushing through things and are begging sometimes to stop. But they don't have anyone that they can talk to about this. So now we worked together and created listening that you, could, you can actually listen to it um, if you come into our little exhibition of the overlay of some of the voices and some of the quotes that came through. And we also collected data on fathers. So we also talked to fathers. We talked to 26 fathers. And this is the, an, uh, a recent piece that I've done that translates the father's data into something. So fathers felt that they were isolated, they were left out often on the side. They were willing helpers, they wanted to be there and they wanted to help, but they actually didn't know what to do. And we drip feed them a bit of information so they don't know, quite know what to do with that. So they just sit beside, uh, feeling at a bit of a loss. And I think that's quite poignant if we're going to think about interventions or think about things that we can actually help. And so now, finally, there's just, uh, we also had a performance on the night of the um, e original exhibition that was through the gallery. So I'm just going to run that, I hope. Because there's quite a few of them in the world. We should be there to 
to support it's just my case. It's a connection and it's what I'm meant to do and it's a beautiful experience. And I remember saying, he's still growing because of all that I'm providing. So I think what the study, this, uh, I think what this project actually demonstrates is that um, when we try and, uh, after we've done our research, we usually write papers and reports and present at conferences. But the people that we actually need um, and who actually need to hear the data are often uh, don't read those papers or those reports. They're, they're, divorced from that. And that art as a medium provides that ability to dis dis disseminate and to translate something in a tangible form that people can then react with. Um, we're not telling anyone how to react in our art. We're asking people to come in and have a look and respond. And so in the exhibition, we also gather data um, at the, uh, during the exhibition and ask people what they felt and how it made them feel. And that, helped, that really helped us uh, understand that these messages that we are, we are um, promoting, which are important messages around health and well-being, are, mis are, are interpreted in a completely different way by, from the, by the people that we're, we're trying to promote the message to. And that there is a disconnect. And so art provides an avenue where we can actually empower people to interpret the messages in a way that means something to them according to their context. And perhaps that is a way forward if we're going to change or improve things, is that we empower the people that we're actually trying to help with the message by giving them something to respond to, rather than just the, the constant push of messages. Um, so I hope I've explained that and done credit to the beautiful work of all our artists. Um, they're an amazing group of women and men to work with. And uh, we would not have been able to produce such um, beautiful work without their creativity. And so my uh, absolute warmth and, and thanks goes to them first and to the women and men who particip participated in our study.